we're only alive we see No, I won't be afraid No, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand, stand by me Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at the song Stand By Me by Benny King. And when I say look at the song, I mean literally to pick it apart to see how it was written. Not just to learn the chords to passively play along, but to really get inside Benny King's head as a songwriter to understand how he composed this chord progression so you gain some insight for your own songwriting too. And we're going to do this on both the piano and the guitar so that you can see how this all works on both instruments. Though we're going to actually start on the piano first because really the piano is a lot simpler as an instrument of composition. Okay, so Stand By Me has five chords in total. The first chord is an A major chord. So what I'm doing is above middle C right here, I'm playing A, E, and C sharp. So that's the first inversion of the A major chord. And then to reinforce that chord, I'm playing two octaves of A down here. So together it sounds like this big A major chord. And then we go to the F sharp minor chord. So my left hand is going to play F sharp. And from E to F sharp, my finger. So it's the same, same notes of A and C sharp, and now I'm playing an F sharp with my middle finger to make it an F sharp minor. And then the next chord is D major. So my thumb just comes up to D, D, F sharp, A, and my left hand goes to D. And then to E major, so I just shift that up to E, and then back to A. So left hand goes to A, right hand goes back to that first inversion of A. So in sequence they are A, F sharp minor, D, E, back to A. Now, that's pretty much the chord progression, those four chords repeated over and over again. And it's really the melody from the verse to the chorus that provides the variety that keeps the song moving forward. The progression does too, the chord progression, but it's very repetitive. Um, so to keep it moving, the melody switches it up as it goes. Um, but to kind of flesh this out, and in the Ben E. King original recording, midway through the song, about a minute, minute and a half in, there are some really lush, Core, uh, lush strings, some instrumentation that really brings it to the next level. So, to keep things interesting here, we're going to include another chord, the C sharp minor chord, to make it a little more interesting. And let me show you what that looks like. So, most of the song is really just A major, F sharp minor, D, E, A. But to follow the bass line in the song, there's some step motion. So, it goes. So to follow that bass line, we're going to play some chords that reinforce that. So instead of going straight from A to F sharp minor, we're going to do A, C sharp minor to F sharp minor. So that's A, so A, E, C sharp. And then to play the C sharp minor, we're going to just drop down from the A to G sharp. So just down one semitone from A. So A, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, and then A, D, A, E, A. So again, that's A, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, and A to get down to D, and then an A with the right hand, but an E with the left hand. So we're transitioning from A to E back to A. And the reason you can play an A with your right hand and an E with your left hand is because E is in the A major chord right there. On the guitar, this chord progression is A major. So we're playing the a, E, and C sharp, and then A down here and E up there, so that's A major, and then F sharp minor, so it's a bar chord, we've got, we're playing C sharp and F sharp, F sharp, A, 
C sharp and F sharp. So it's an F sharp minor. And then up to the D major, so it's D, F sharp, and A with the open D, D major, and then E major, which is E, B, and G sharp, and then back to A. So the rhythm is. So it's those same chords repeated over and over. Now in the second half of the song, when the instrumentation comes in, then we can mix it up a bit. So we play the A, and then down to C sharp minor. So we just play an A, and then first finger plays the G sharp. Second finger is playing E, third finger is playing C sharp. So that's a C sharp minor on its way to F sharp minor. And then we play an A before D major, and then an A before E major, back to A. So we've thrown in a couple of quick chord changes to keep the harmony moving. So in the second half of the song, it's A, A, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, A to D, A to E, A. C sharp minor to F sharp minor to A to D A to E A. All right, so Stand By Me has five chords in total. In order of appearance, they are A, F sharp minor, D, E, and C sharp minor. Now, in most lessons, this is where it just stops. People will tell you to learn the chords, play along with the song, and you're all good. But knowing what chords to play is only the first step. So to dig a little deeper, the next step is to understand why we're playing these particular chords in the first place. And to do this, we have to identify the tonic or the tonal home bass, the chord that the song centers around and resolves to, which is A major in this case. A is the tonal home bass, so the song is in the key of A. To show this, let's just play through the chord progression and see what all of the chords naturally want to resolve to. So we start with A, F sharp minor, D, E, and let's say we went back down to D. It's like, oh, no, that doesn't resolve. The E wants to go to A. So A is really the key that this song is in. So of the five chords in this song, A is the tonic, which is insightful. But to understand why these other chords are used and how they fit into the whole picture, the next question is to figure out the mode this song was written in. Stand By Me could have been written in any of the seven modes. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, or Locrian. And knowing the mode it's in will tell us more about how all of these harmonies are used in the song, which we can figure out, the correct mode, through a process of elimination. Now because Stand By Me is in the key of A, let's start with the A major scale along the top here to get our bearings, which is A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. A is one, B is two, C sharp is three, and so on. So using this pattern as a reference point, let's see where the chords of this song are positioned in the key of A. A is the one chord, so it goes here. C sharp minor is the three chord, so it's in this position. D is the four chord, so it goes here, and so on for each chord in this song. All right, so we're getting closer to understanding these chords, and like I say, figuring out the mode is just a process of elimination. Now because A is the tonic, and it's a one chord, and it's a major chord, it means that A is a major one. So that means that A could be in the Ionian mode, could be in the Lydian mode or the Mixolydian mode. So to narrow it down, let's look at C sharp minor, which is a minor chord, a minor three. So that means that it could be in the Ionian mode or in the Lydian mode. And that narrows it down now to Ionian or Lydian, because these chords A sharp, or sorry, A major and C sharp minor are uh, in either mode. 
So now looking at D major, that's a major four. So that means that it could be in the Ionian mode, the Dorian mode, and the major four also shows up in the Mixolydian mode. But because we already ruled out Lydian and Mixolydian and Dorian, that means that really the song is in Ionian because these three chords are already in that mode. But just to confirm, let's look at E major, which is a major five chord, and that is in the Ionian mode, the Lydian mode, and just those two modes. So again, Ionian is the consistent mode here. And then looking at F sharp minor, that's a minor six, which is in the Ionian mode. And it is also in the Lydian mode and in the Mixolydian mode. So what we're seeing here is Stand By Me was written in the A Ionian mode because major one, minor three, major four, major five, and the minor six are all in Ionian. All right, so we've gone through a couple of steps. We've first figured out what chords are even in this song, five chords, and then we started to get a little more organized in understanding why these particular chords are used because they all happen to be in the A Ionian mode. Though the next question is, what informs Benny King's movement between all of these chords? Why did he arrange the chord progression like he did? Part of it has to do with the way that the chords support and follow the melody, and also because of how the chords are guided by the theory of harmony. So to explain, let's start with the circle of fifths. This fundamental pattern illustrates how all notes and chords are connected to each other in music, which we can visualize with the color wheel. And when we focus on just these 12 notes and then rearrange them into the chromatic scale, which is the pattern of notes as they appear on instruments, unwinding them into a linear format like this, we can pick out the A Ionian mode. And by combining every other note in this pattern using tertian intervals or intervals of major thirds and minor thirds, seven chords are formed, which make a string of harmonies that we can wrap into a loop of harmonic space like this to then better understand how the song was written. In this harmonic space, it's really just the seven chords of the A Ionian mode wrapped into a loop. So we've got A major, which is made up of A, C sharp, and E. Those three notes make up the A major chord. Then C sharp minor is C sharp, E, and G sharp. Together, those three notes make the C sharp minor chord. E major is E, G sharp, and B. So that's the major five chord, and so on. So all of these chords are just really represented in this circular formation. And to simplify things, we can look at each root note as representing the chord. So really these three notes make up the A major chord, but we could just say that's the A major chord. And if A major moved up to D, we could just say it's moving up to D and then moving over to E and so on. So let's look at the chord progression of Stand By Me to see how this looks. And this is the progression. We start with A major and move over to the minor six or F sharp minor before looping up to D major, the major four, over to E major five, and then resolving back to the major one or A. So A major, F sharp minor, D major, over to E major, and back to A major again. And then midway through the song when the lush strings come in, we've got a little more harmonic movement between the chords. It's really all the same chords, except we added the C sharp minor chord, but we start with A major, major one, briefly pass through C sharp minor on our way to F sharp minor, the minor six, back to A briefly on our way to D major four, then the major four briefly passing through A major up to E major five, and then resolving back to A. So again, A major, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, passing through A up to D, D down to A on its way to E, and then E back to A again and again. All of this harmonic movement is in the key of A and A Ionian specifically. So let's play the song from beginning to end to hear and see it all come together.
So that is Stand By Me by Benny King, and actually it was co-written by Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller, who co-wrote and wrote a bunch of stuff, including Hound Dog by Elvis Presley. Um, they also did Kansas City, Young Blood, Searchin', Yakety Yak, Jailhouse Rock, among a bunch of others. Really, really good songwriters. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this was insightful into this song. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.